Good morning. It's um, May the 23rd, 2017, Tuesday morning. Project Uplift Literacy. How black history need not ever be a black mystery. May 22nd in black history. What could I address today? Oh, I know. Raise the flag, boys, raise the flag high. Black Americans have always carried patriotism in the deepest depths of their souls, despite the many obstacles of oppression and racism faced in this country. This day in black history, May 23rd, 1900, a Congressional Medal of Honor ceremony was held for William H. Carney. William H. Carney was the first black recipient of the Medal of Honor. Now, he is not the first black to receive the Medal of Honor. He was the first black recipient of the Medal of Honor. You see, his act of courage occurred in May of 1863 as a member of the 54th Massachusetts Volunteer Regiment in their assault against Fort Wagner in South Carolina. He had to wait 37 years before the actual ceremony of his Medal of Honor, Congressional Medal of Honor. The heroism of William H. Carney and other black soldiers in the Civil War helped to spur the spell racial stereotypes and rallied African Americans to the Union cause symbolized by the abolition of slavery. Of the two million soldiers and sailors who fought and died for the North during the Civil War, nearly 10% of those men and, and soldiers and sailors were men of color. Born in February uh, 29th of 1840 in Norfolk, Virginia, and died in December, died on December 9th, 1908 in Boston, Massachusetts. William Harvey Con Connie was an outstanding black American. William Harvey Carvey, uh, Connie, as I said, was born February 29th in 1840. He was, to, he was born to a slave named William and a free woman named Ruth, named Ann Dean. Ann had previously been the slave of Major Carney of Norfolk, Virginia. By a prior agreement, she was set free upon Carney's death. At the time of her son's birth, William was still a slave. Following the custom of the time, the younger William, like his parents, was given the plantation master's surname. Because there were no schools for African-American children, education for slaves or their offsprings was discouraged. That's saying it, Molly, was illegal in the South. Young Connie was unable to read or write until his early teens. He took lessons in private and in secret at a local black church and contemplated becoming a preacher. In the mid 1850s, Connie's father escaped from slavery through the Underground Railroad and made his way to Massachusetts. William Connie saw, soon took the same road, the same route and road north. He joined his father as a dock walker, dock worker in the Welling Port of New Bedford and work loading and unloading ships. The Carney men saved their money and pooled their resources to purchase the freedom of other family members with whom they would eventually be reunited in the state of Massachusetts. Before the outbreak of the Civil War, William Carney became a member and trustee uh, at the Salem Baptist Church and he worked restocking wholesale and retail stores in the area around New Bedford, Massachusetts. On January 1st, 1863, 
President Abraham Lincoln issued the Emancipation Proclamation in which African Americans were encouraged to join the Union Navy in the Union Army. In response to published recruiting appeals, Carney soon enlisted in C Company of the 54th Massachusetts Volunteer Infantry Regiment, an all-black unit under the command of Colonel Robert Gould Shaw, a white abolitionist. After training near Boston, a company 600 strong marched off to do battle in May of 1863. After a few skirmishes with Confederate troops in Georgia and South Carolina, they engaged in their first major battle. They led the mass assault against Fort Wagner near Charleston, South Carolina. If you remember, if you ever, and if you haven't yet, please go watch the movie uh, Glory, because in that movie, uh, the battle uh, at Fort Wagner is dramatized. But during the nearly suicidal attack, William Connie was wounded twice, but kept advancing. When he saw the regimental flag bearer fall fatally shot, he scooped up the flag and rallied the troops forward. Arriving atop the fort's parapets, Connie found he was all alone. G Gould, I mean, Gould Shaw, Robert Gould Shaw, and more than 50 men were mortally wounded in the attack. 15 of the company were captured, and more than 50 were missing in action, and some 150 others suffered wounds. With no visible support, Connie retreated, sustaining additional wounds in the leg and head as he struggled to return to the Union lines. Before relinquishing the rescued flag to a comrade and falling unconscious, William Connie modestly maintained he was merely doing his duty in keeping the flag from touching the ground. For his heroism, which disproved the prevailing racist notion that African Americans would be cowardly soldiers, Connie was the first African American cited for the Congressional Medal of Honor. However, as I said earlier, he was not the first to actually receive his medal. His presentation did not take place until May 23rd, 1900. Promoted to sergeant, color sergeant for his brave deeds and unable to serve in combat because of his injuries, Connie mustered out of the military in mid-1864. In 1865, he married Susanna Williams and subsequently fathered a daughter, Clara, who became a music teacher. William afterwards served for a time as New Bedford Streetlight Superintendent. After a brief stay in the state of California, Connie returned to New Bedford, where he became the community's first African-American postal carrier, serving for 32 years until his retirement in 1901. For the remaining years of his life, Connie worked as a messenger, delivering documents to and from the Massachusetts State House. It was there that an old war wound caught up with him. One day in 1908, his weakened leg became caught in an elevator machinery. Connie was severely mangled in the accident and died of the injuries that he that occurred that day. Connie was long a popular speaker at patriotic events, and Connie received the highest honors after his death. The Massachusetts State House flag was lowered to half staff. This was a gesture normally reserved for power for, for mourning powerful dignitaries, not former slaves. In 1908, Connie was prominently depicted on the Augusta St. Gardens Design Memorial to Shaw, unveiled on the Boston Commons in 1897. In addition, the lyrics of a rousing turn-of-the-century song composed soon after 
the former Medal of Honors, the federal, the formal Medal of Honor presentation, Boys, the Old Flag Never Touched the Ground, also celebrated Connie's heroic deeds. William Connie's former home in New Bedford is a local landmark listed on the National Register of Historic Places. Raise the flag high, my boys. Raise the flag high. This song, Boys, the Old Flag Never Touched the Ground, celebrates Connie's actions and the actions of those black men during the Battle of Fort Wagner during the American Civil War in May of 1863. After Carney's death in 1908, Henry Mather and George D. E. Loper put his, music, put, his, put his song to music and published it. The chorus celebrates Carney's action. "'Twas the blue against the gray, boys, and he said to all around, I've only done my duty, boys. The old flag never touched the ground. I've only done my duty, boys. He said it to all around. I've only done my duty, boys. It never touched the ground. The account of Sergeant Connie's action, as it appears on his Medal of Honor citation dated May 23rd, 1900. When the color sergeant was shot down, this soldier grasped the flag and led the way to, a, to the parapet and planted the colors thereon. When the troops fell back, he brought back the flag under fierce fire in which he was twice severely wounded. This has been Project Uplift Literacy for a Tuesday morning. Raise the flag high. Raise that flag high.